Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I got Bitcoin up here right now on the daily and trading just shy of $40,000. We have seen a bit of a decline. Um, Bitcoin still holding though. On the daily, we are not seeing it getting past this former low, at least not yet. It is holding this former level of support that we saw back at the end of September, early October of 2021. And still forming higher lows, you know, this is uh, positive news. We want to see this trend continue, albeit we are still seeing very, very low volume action. But Bitcoin really isn't the big story today. We did get some recent news, the unsealing of the document. We uh, got the final tidbits of information late last night. And uh, it looks as though it has caused XRP to move up dramatically over the last uh, hour or so. Well, I don't know if that was the only reason. Check that out. This is XRP now on the hourly and that candlestick went from about 77 cents all the way uh, up to about 82 and a half. Uh, and right now XRP is hovering at about 82 cents. So what are we seeing in the United States and Canada on this Saturday morning? I'm recording this in the morning. And uh, I mean, that was quite unexpected considering we did get this information several hours ago now. But I mean, could there be other factors involved? Now, my wife actually just sent me this article, Canadian cryptocurrency exchanges ordered to cease dealings with those bank accounts that are linked to the protests that are happening in Ottawa right now. If you guys have not been following huge demonstrations right now in Ottawa and uh, the Canadian government has said that they are looking to freeze accounts uh, and that would extend to cryptocurrency accounts as well. Uh, and we also have Jesse Powell here as well, guys. This was uh, retweeted out by Disclose TV. New co-founder and CEO of Kraken. So uh, that would be the Kraken Cryptocurrency Exchange. One of the largest crypto exchanges urges people to get their coins out of custodial wallets amid developments in Canada. And Jesse Powell tweeted this out a couple of days ago, 100% yes, it has slash will happen and 100% yes, we will be forced to comply. If you're worried about it, don't keep your funds with any centralized slash regulated custodian. We cannot protect you, get your coins and cash out and only trade peer to peer. What he is essentially saying here, guys, if you do have your cryptocurrency and uh, you know, even if you have not been linked to these protests in Ottawa, I keep saying this, I've been saying this for years now, keep your cryptocurrency safe on a cold wallet storage solution like a Ledger Nano S or X or something similar. I personally use the Ledger Nano. I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video. Um, you can use it if you want. You do not have to use it. And the Ledger is just one option. There are so many cold wallet storage solutions available. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the writing is on the wall now and uh, you know, for Canadians especially, if you do hold cryptocurrency, I would not put it past the liberal governments to uh, extend this beyond even these uh, these protest supporters. So just be careful, guys. Back to the news, though, and back to XRP pumping kind of curiously. So we did get some news in the SEC lawsuit, which I am going to get to in a second. Uh, Mickle Markets over here uh, posted this, though. First, he mentions this. It's official. The SEC has retracted all former guidance regarding Ethereum. Wow, this is huge. Everybody needs to wake up now. And so this is what he posted from the unsealed documents. Moreover, while it is true that the SEC has not expressed a formal agency position on whether offers and sales of Ether constitute offers and sales of securities, uh, the withheld documents refleet deliberations about what to communicate to market participants about Corp Fin's approach to the regulation of offers and sales of digital assets, including Ether. Indeed, the deliberations here, like deliberations in additional document three, which the court held to be, and then uh, it cuts off there. Nevertheless, uh, a clear admission, Crypto Ditto also posting this, uh, so this is also from that document, and was in fact an essential link in the SEC's deliberative process with respect to Ether, the speech itself, and many drafts and comments by the SEC staff across different SEC divisions and offices deliberating the agency's approach to the regulation of digital assets show that Director Hinman and other SEC staff used the speech to provide public guidance as to how Corp Fin would apply the federal securities laws to offer and sales of digital assets, including Ether. Indeed, SEC regulations provide that Director Hinman's public statements could be relied upon as representing the views of Corp Fin, the division he led. So the Ethereum question under the microscope, but that wasn't even the biggest thing. So DJ Peter Vass also posted this, uh, an article from AMB Crypto, SEC versus Ripple, who will benefit 
from the unsealing of memos from a law firm. And so here is finally what we have uncovered. So of particular interest are the two unsealed memos which reveal the law firm's take on Ripple's business model and the use cases of XRP. And so we touched on this in a video I did the other day. Uh, and so just to reiterate, back in 2012, Ripple consulted the international law firm Perkins Coy to obtain a review of its business model and uh, learn of any legal threats. After the law firm's first analysis in February of 2012, Ripple submitted a revised plan. In October of 2012, Perkins Coy wrote to Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb about the risk of Ripple credits, which we now know as XRP, being considered a security. And so the analysis stated as follows. Although we believe that the compelling argument can be made that Ripple credits do not constitute securities under the federal securities laws, given the lack of applicable case law, we believe that there is some risk, albeit small, that the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, disagrees with our analysis. Now, we got to remember, this was back in 2012 when there weren't even that many people trading Bitcoin. So XRP minted and uh, is considered a very, very new cryptocurrency at that time. As they mentioned here, no case law to give any um, acceptable precedent. And so, you know, although there is a small risk, in 2012, this is what we believe. So following this, the law firm warned Ripple not to promote Ripple credits as an investment opportunity. Uh, the law firm also suggested that Ripple get a no action letter from the SEC. Perkins Coy further warned of the risk of buyers treating Ripple credits as an investment, stating if Ripple credits are purchased and sold in the secondary market, individuals purchasing Ripple credits may do so with expectation of increased value value caused by increased demand and limited supply. And so James K. Filan also uh, chiming in on this, overall, this is favorable to Ripple and the individual defendants. Both memos are from Perkins Coy. The first memo was prepared in February 2012 and sent to Jed McCaleb and Jesse Powell. It says if new coin is sold in what now would look like an ICO, uh, I didn't see the term ICO being used, it would be likely that it would be considered a security. But Ripple then revised its business plan and went back to Perkins Coy, which issued a second memo in October of 2012. This second memo was sent to Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb. The second memo was more positive, and while it said that there was a small risk that the SEC could disagree, Perkins Coy concluded that Ripple credits should not be considered securities. The memo also suggested steps Ripple could take to minimize the risk that the SEC would disagree with Perkins Coy. The memos cover the full landscape of legal issues, not just the issue of securities, and I think show how careful Ripple was trying to be. Also, this was five years before the SEC really even started talking about digital tokens. Uh, and then down here, it seems to me that Ripple was being very proactive, which is very important. And so guys, the judge is going to take all of this into consideration when making her final decision. Ripple was indeed being very, very careful from the beginning, which is very important. States here, they were being proactive. Uh, there certainly is nothing in these memos that suggests that Ripple was being reckless or ignored any substantial risk. We also know guys, if you uh, do remember that Ripple did uh, do a giveaway, 25,000 XRP, I think as their initial kind of uh, testing ground to test the to test the ecosystem so you know giving away xrp definitely not the same thing as selling it as an ico selling it to fund the company david schwartz has also gone on the record uh very publicly and it is very public that ripple was funded by vc capital so venture capital funding and also not by the sales of xrp so these are all good things i think for the ripple case there certainly is nothing in these memos that would suggest that ripple was being reckless right in fact the memo suggests the opposite that ripple was being very very careful so interesting perspective there of course, Stuart Alderati, uh, in-house counsel for Ripple, also mentioning the conclusion of these now public 2012 memos is clear. XRP does not constitute a security. The fact that Ripple had the foresight to seek legal advice from a prominent firm in 2012 in the absence of clear case law and five years before the SEC even started talking about digital assets should be applauded. And so guys, this is all going to come down to how the judge views this, how the judge views these so-called Ripple credits as they were called back in 2012, now known as XRP. Unfortunately, the analysis hinges entirely on the fact that XRP are used as an instrument for moving value. This coming from at Enable Consensus on Twitter. And not for speculative purposes. I think we can all agree that both are true. So from my perspective, this memo doesn't change anything. He goes on by saying, uh, second tweet here, uh, just pointing, or no, it's down here. Uh, except for the fact that we have evidence that Ripple OpenCoin was prudent enough to minimize risk by consulting a reputable law firm. So even if Ripple did do something that wasn't 100% by the books, 
Uh, I think that the precedent and what the judge is going to see here is that they at least tried. They tried their hardest. They tried to seek advice from the SEC. The SEC was not giving them any fair guidance, which uh, brings us back to the fair notice defense. And so this is going to bode well for Ripple and XRP. And Rizal down here saying, you know, you can make the speculation argument for just about anything. People speculate in gold. They speculate in buying Rolex watches that appreciate in value, commodities, etc. XRP, though, has clear utility in a range of use cases. People speculate in Bitcoin, but that's not a security. So, you know, different points here. Brad Garlinghouse also mentioning the truth is out for everyone to read. What we see is that the SEC waited eight years to decide they disagreed with this analysis, decimating thousands upon thousands of XRP holders who they purport to protect in the process. So much for being mission driven. Retweeting out Stuart Alderati's tweet, which I had uh, just read to you guys earlier. So, um, boy, it is heating up, guys. And, uh, you know, Fred Rispoli here on Twitter also giving his point of view. With unsealing, now we get to see how organized of a judge the Honorable Torres is. And so, this is what it's going to come down to. How is Judge Torres really going to view this, right? Remember, she has had the unsealed documents for almost a year and could have already written her decision, but was waiting for the public to see everything since A, the legal memos were heavily relied upon by both parties, and B, she has already stated this is a matter of public interest and importance. Her order would have been difficult to not itself be partially redacted if the motion and legal memo exhibits were not unsealed. So decision as early as next week, probably no later than March 11th. Easiest out for the judge is to deny all motions, which does favor Ripple. Granting Larson and denying the SEC would be a crushing blow. So yes, another interesting point here uh, coming from Fred Rizzoli. Let's also not forget how many heavy hitters uh, in the regulatory community in the U.S., have uh, gone on the record and given their opinion about XRP. I mean, not that it really matters, but I'm sure the judge is very, very aware of this, courtesy of XRP underscore Crow here. They think XRP is not a security, so one, uh, Chris Giancarlo, Corey Johnson, Mary Jo White, Tom Emmer, the FSA in Japan, the FCA in the UK, Singapore, Switzerland, of course, the XRP community, and uh, here are just some of the quotes from Chris Giancarlo. Under a fair application of the Howey test and the SEC's presently expanding analysis, XRP should not be regulated as a security, but instead considered a currency or a medium of exchange. Uh, we got Tom Emmer here. First of all, my position is very clear. XRP is not a security. All right, he said that back in August of 2020. Uh, also, Mary Jo White here. Let's not forget she was the former chair of the US SEC and now on Ripple's council. There's no way to sugarcoat it. SEC is dead wrong legally and factually. That, of course, regarding the lawsuit in question. And uh, Christian Carlo actually did make an appearance on Fox Business yesterday. He gave his opinion. This is a fairly lengthy clip. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to play the full thing for you guys. It's uh, just over six minutes. I am going to play you guys the beginning here. Uh, let me play you guys this. Chris, you've said publicly you don't think XRP should be regulated as security. So why is the SEC so adamant about this? It's great to be with you, Cheryl. Thanks very much, Charlie. Good to see you. Good to see you, Chris. Um, you know, you had uh, Chairman Gensler on just, I think, a few days ago, and he made it very clear he wasn't going to comment on an ongoing uh, enforcement matter. You know, the same applies uh, to former chairman as much as it does to current chairman. What I would say is, before the SEC uh, launched its enforcement action against XRP and Ripple, I penned an op-ed along with my colleagues from Wilkie, Farr and Gallagher in an international uh, law review uh, applying the same approach we would have taken when I was at the CFTC to analyze XRP under the so-called Howey test. And we came to the conclusion in that uh, 2020 article that it wasn't a security. And I stand behind that article today. But as for commenting on that specific action, uh, once it's in front of the court, it's not for me as a former chair to uh, handicap how the judge may rule in this case. Well, Chris, um, this case, the ether is not before the court right now. At least it's before the court of public opinion and whether it is a security. But let's let's unpack this a little bit. Gary Gensler has consistently sidestepped the question if XRP is a security, because remember, they did some of the similar things they did on Ether, which is sell the token to help build out their platform, thus making an investment in the SEC's view, obviously not your view, then why isn't Ether a security? Because they did an ICO to help out build the, to help at some point build the Ethereum blockchain. So I guess my question to you, Chris, is if the SEC wins this case, does, does Gensler have to go back in time and 
basically consider Ether a security and, and ding the Ethereum people? Well, it's it's the right question to ask, Charlie. And, and in my book, uh, I talk about our analysis and our work with the SEC back in 2019 when I was chair of the CFTC and Jay Clayton was at the SEC and our work looking at Ethereum. And, I, you know, it was the Ethereum precedent that we looked at in 2020 after I left the commission uh, in, in coming to the conclusion that XRP is not a security. Right. So. Uh, the analogy is certainly there. The precedent is there. And I think um, depending on how this case comes out, it's going to it, it could be very challenging for the way Ethereum is considered. So I'm going to leave it there, guys, about halfway into the clip. Uh, I will link this in the description if you guys are interested. Again, Christian Carlo, former CFTC chairman, also used to be on the SEC. They talk later on in this clip about it being um, essentially a turf war. Christian Carlo uh, didn't really want to comment on that, was very diplomatic in his response, but uh, I just thought this clip was a little long to play you guys the full thing. Uh, but again, I will link it in the description of the video for you guys. So you've heard it a couple of times now. If Ethereum is considered a security, well then XRP should be considered one and vice versa. If Ethereum is very clearly not a security, then well, XRP should fall along the same lines. And um, I mean, I think the case is actually even stronger for XRP because there was no official ICO. They were not selling tokens in, in they were not selling tokens specifically to build out the network, whereas that was certainly not the case for Ethereum. That just being one of the many reasons, of course we know XRP already has a function. It already has utility and has been being utilized more or less in an ecosystem that can sustain itself. You know, it's not just Ripple that is building on the XRPL, although Ripple is one of the major contributors, but there are other programmers, other developers building out the XRPL for various different use cases. We know about the connections with Ripple and the World Economic Forum, for example. I've pointed you to many different articles and uh, statements made by uh, organizations like the World Bank, the IMF, suggesting that XRP and RippleNet are going to be utilized in a new financial system. But then we got things making us scratch our head. Uh, and this I brought to you guys yesterday. If you guys didn't catch yesterday's afternoon video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Crypto Eddie bringing up an interesting point. Now, I brought this up yesterday stating why would Coinbase be transferring XRP if XRP is not being listed on Coinbase, at least as of now. Are they going to be listing it soon? I do think that that is uh, very likely a good possibility considering uh, all the movement, first of all, all the movement for XRP on Coinbase, but also the fact that this SEC lawsuit is coming to an end. Crypto Andy bringing up a very good point. This was XRP sitting on this Coinbase wallet activated by Coinbase in August of 2020. Coinbase move XRP to another active XRP Coinbase wallet. Coinbase may have halted trades, but most exchanges do also make markets. And so, although they're not an official market-making exchange, as per uh, Ripple's noted partnerships, it could be that Coinbase is still making markets. If you look really closely, nearly 80 million XRP was moved from Coinbase wallet to Coinbase wallet. Not a crazy amount if you are watching the exchange whales. So, Crypto Eddy bringing this up, they could be a market maker for sure. Also consider this, guys, if you uh, maybe want your mind blown a little more, 37 honk honk sats, Coinbase is partnered with the World Economic Forum. You can't make this stuff up. So just a screen grab here. Coinbase, one of those companies also listed on the World Economic Forum's website. So if you do have your coins custodied on Coinbase, you may want to think twice. You may want to put them into cold storage. Um, I mean, this explains a lot too. The fact that Coinbase seems to always conveniently go down when there are high volume events. They have not been listing XRP, at least as of now, but it does make you wonder, and it should probably worry you guys, the powers that be are the ones in control, so make sure you take as much control back as possible, put your cryptocurrency in a cold storage wallet solution like a Ledger Nano or something similar. Again, the link is in the description if you guys wanna use it. You do not have to use it though, there are many other options out there. Um, but then also this from James Rule XRP, I find it odd that Coinbase took the time to show everybody how to find XRP on other platforms. So on the one hand, this is a exchange that is partnered with the World Economic Forum and they decided to delist XRP for all the mainstream reasons why exchanges in the US are delisting XRP. Well, we don't know out of an abundance of caution, we don't want to be selling this asset on the exchange yet. On the other hand, they are posting this on their website. We've provided some hints to help you find a way to buy XRP that works for you, huh? And this is literally just on their website, coinbase.com slash how to buy slash XRP. 
and it just gives users a step-by-step -step method uh, where to look, check coin market cap, uh, pick a platform, make your purchase, make the purchase on your chosen platform. And it's essentially saying, yeah, we're not gonna sell it to you, but if you guys do want to buy XRP, this is how you go about it. Things that make you go, hmm. A connection to the World Economic Forum, they delist XRP for, you know, the obvious reasons, yet, for whatever reason, they're letting people know where they can buy XRP. This isn't new either, this has been up for a while, but it does make me wonder, are we getting to that point where Coinbase is going to relist XRP very, very soon? Um, because of the clarity, coming to the final leg of the marathon for the SEC lawsuit, the utility that's going to be running through XRP, of course, reframing the new financial system, Coinbase, a partner, with the World Economic Forum. It does make me wonder, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.